Nearly half of all new Broncos on Ford lots are 2023s. That means of the 15,704 Broncos that car gurus pulled up today, 7,042 of them were 2023s. In this video, let's dive into exactly how to best capitalize on the fact that Ford dealers are finally ready to pull their heads out of their asses when it comes to discount counting these hot models and finally get them off their lots. Just FYI, my name is Ari and for more than 10 years I've helped thousands buy a new car first as a BMW dealer and second as a consultant here in Boston and I need to tell you something. Do not buy a Bronco until you watch this video because I'm going to give you some insane negotiation tactics to use at the Ford dealership. Surprisingly, the Bronco performed very well in the small overlap crash test conducted by the IIHS. Let's take a look, shall we? Oh. That's sick. I was a fan of the Bronco before watching this crash test, and I'll tell you, I'm a bit more interested in it now. Of what's available on dealership lots at the moment, you're gonna find the following breakdown of inventory, but you're gonna find it extremely strange. First of all, navigating inventory is a headache at best, leaving me absolutely flummoxed. Flummoxed, an adjective meaning bewildered or perplexed, leaving me absolutely flummoxed and curious as to who the hell is in charge of planning the trim levels of the Bronco and if it's a group of children that Ford has assigned to name these things. After we're done discussing numbers in the next section, let's actually dive into what these mystical model names mean in layman's terms. First of all, we've got more Raptors than any other trim Bronco. Let that sink in for a second. The Raptor is supposed to be the hottest one. Now, because inventory is all over the place. I've combined everything so that the trim level represents both two and four door models and reduced it down only to the top five which leaves us 3,051 Badlands, 2,475 Raptors, which I know now comes in at number two after condensing and combining, 2,382 Outer Banks, 1,353 Big Bend, and 1,368 Wild Track. What do all these mean? In a few words for each one, the Badlands is smack dab in the middle of the lineup with more aggressive styling, fatter tires, upgraded suspension, nice invotainment, and no leather vinyl seats. This really is the way to go for the best bang for your buck. Next, the Raptor. Pretty much self-explanatory. 37 inch tires, wide fender flares, ridiculously flexible suspension, bottom covered in steel, and seven of what they call GOAT modes goes over any terrain mode. Next, the Outer Banks. Outer Banks is slimmer, more of a European style Bronco, nothing excessive about it. More of a somewhat upgraded Bronco experience. Next, the Big Bend, the most base and boring of all the Broncos. No frills, no excitement. This is like the perfect Bronco for someone with a teenager who's begging them for a Bronco and won't really know the difference between all of these trims. Lastly, my favorite one. Just kidding. I don't actually have a favorite one, but this probably would be my favorite one if I did have one. The Wild Track. This one feels like a Raptor, is probably just as capable as the Raptor, but costs way less than the Raptor. This is the one I would get personally. So because it's the perfect candidate to get a deal on, let's shoot for a Badlands four-door. And the one I've got has an MSRP of 54675 It's also a stick. I find that really, really cool that they're still offering cars in sticks. Four Broncos have a measly markup of about 3.5%. How do I know this? Well, the cheat sheet, of course. You can access it by clicking here or the link below. 25 bucks, you'd be kind of crazy not to get it. I target this for sure because it seems as though a ton of people on the Bronco forum, specifically Bronco 6G members, are securing deals with dealers for invoice and even a thousand below invoice in a lot of cases. Targeting invoice brings us to a selling price just a couple thousand less than the MSRP. Does that sound good for a 2024? I think so. I think 4,000 off a sticker on a 2023 would probably 
be my target right now, but closer to the end of the year, if there are any left, I would probably shoot for closer to 6,000 off. What I would do personally is leverage the information on the forums and target local dealers, telling them you're considering using the forum sponsors as a backup if you cannot secure a deal locally. Something along of the lines of the following. To your manager, I am in the market for a Bronco and I've attached a link or build of the one I'm interested in to this email. I realize that buying in stock would likely get me a far better deal, so I want to give my local dealer a shot before thinking of going out of state. I see that a lot of people online are securing Broncos under invoice and was hoping to do the same with your help. What do you think you can do for me on an in-stock Bronco. This will automatically point to the fact that you kind of know already what you want to pay, and that's going to be either invoice or slightly less than invoice. Remember, dealers were getting over MSRP a year or two ago, and the only way that you could get it at MSRP was to factory order it and wait a year or two. Now, we've got a bit more flexibility. As far as rebates and incentives go, the only thing available for 2024 models is a conquest incentive for anyone who owns a Jeep that's a 1995 or newer in the household. For 2023s, it feels even worse, even though you get an additional $1,000 rebate. Just a thousand, like nothing else. No promo APR, no nothing. Kind of a head scratcher here. I don't know. I'm a bit torn. I'd love to get some more money off if possible, but does getting it at invoice or even a bit less feel okay? Yeah, I guess in this context where people were paying either way over sticker or waiting in line for one for excessive amounts of time, but I'm not even 100% certain that the Bronco still has that kind of appeal that I'd either need to pay over sticker for one or wait a year and a half for one. It kind of feels like the Wrangler right now, pretty much. What about leasing it? Let's run to identical scenarios, one on a 2024 and one on a 2023. The only difference in these two programs is the fact that the 2024 has a 62% residual as opposed to the 2023's 59% residual and that we've got a thousand in extra rebates coming from Ford for 2023's. Both are absolutely marred with an 8.93% APR on the lease. How do I know all this information about residuals and money factors? Well, the cheat sheet. Of course, plugging it all in into the lease calculator, assuming you're getting it at invoice price, assuming you're paying your inception fees due at start, and assuming you've done the most critical thing that you've hit like and subscribe. I'm watching, like, go ahead, do it. We'd be talking about 806 a month on the 2024 and 812 a month on the 2023. That's not including tax. That's also very, very painful, like really painful. $12,575 in total interest being shelled out if you decided to lease the Bronco. Basically, $325 of your $800 payment is pure interest. This is crazy. If you didn't hate Ford's numbers lately, this may have just put you over the edge like it did to me. So get this, insurerviz.com is saying that the Bronco is roughly the same cost to insure than the Jeep Wrangler on average. The yearly rate we're seeing in America is about 2104. And since a lot of you watching are in California, New York, Texas, Florida, and Illinois, let's check out your yearly rates. California and Florida, you're about 2,500 bucks. New York, about 2,400. Texas, about two grand. Illinois, about 1,800. I should say that major cities like LA, New York City, and Chicago are probably going to see premiums a few hundred dollars more than this. What about Consumer Reports? Did they like it? I mean, if you consider a 46 out of 100 a decent score, maybe, yeah, maybe they liked it a little bit. Predicted reliability was even lower coming in at a 37. Actually, I'm very curious to know actually if Ford dealerships give Bronco customers a loaner Bronco when they come in for service or if they get a Bronco Sport. The verdict buy it used and keep an eye out on cargurus.com by saving the search so that whenever they put up new inventory that that gets emailed to you again you guys by clicking here or the link in the description below you'll be able to access the cheat sheet 25 bucks like really you'd be kind of nuts not to if you found this information useful please consider subscribing thank you so so much for watching guys we'll see you on the next one